Okay, good evening again, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us in Adult Sunday School. It is a privilege today's Palm Sunday, and we reflect on, you know, that Jubilant time when people celebrated Jesus Christ before his resurrection. And um, so we reflected on that today. Today we will be going into the lesson to have further discussion on God's word and to interpret, you know, the mind of God. What is it that he, he wants of us? What is it that he's saying in his word? And so even though there are few of us on the platform this evening, we know that once our intention and our hearts and minds are on God, he is in the present, in our presence, and he will bless and we will be enlightened by his word. So let us open our hearts and our minds. Let us pray for our teacher and let us have a very interactive um, day, afternoon, as we discuss and learn more about God and his word. May I invite you to just bow your heads with me as we pray before I hand over to our teacher. Father, we give you honor and glory. We exalt you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege to come together once more, Lord, on this platform, to study your word together. We ask the Father that you will just reveal your you help us, Lord God, to understand your words. Lord, may we not just only understand, but may we embrace, hide your words in our heart, oh God, and, 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 and be obedient to your words, your commandments, so that, Lord God, we can reach a standard of righteousness, righteous living that you have established for us, your dear children. We pray for Brother Joan, who is should have been the person that is moderating tonight, this evening session. But Lord God, you know everything about him after you touch him from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet and help him, Lord, to recover, Lord God, from whatever any, any, any attack of the enemy, Lord Jesus. Oh God, just give him a testimony so that, Lord God, a testimony of victory. So we'll all be encouraged and continue to live by your words. Thank you for those who are here. God, we pray that you'll enable others to, to join. And may we have a wonderful time studying your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So thank you very much, Sister Griffiths, for coming. Sister Dubidad, also for joining um, our teacher. Minister Mitchell, and I have beside me my husband who always, you know, listen in. We'll be very quiet, but he listens. All right. And so I just want to welcome you all. And if you have family members with you, welcome to Sunday School. Mr. Mitchell, Minister Mitchell will be taking us through the lesson this afternoon. So please welcome her by just opening your mics and giving her and give her a round of applause. Welcome, Minister. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Afternoon. And welcome afternoon. to our Sunday School, Adult Sunday School class. This is the Adult Sunday School class coming out of the Church of God of Prophecy in Stony Hill. And our lesson for today is guarding God's truth. truth. I hope you can see the slide. If you're seeing, let me hear you say amen. 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 Guarding God's truth. Now, let me say good evening to our superintendent, Mr. White and her husband, Sister Griffith, Sister Dubidad, let me also greet in anticipation our pastor with all his coming online and many others and his wife who are always coming online. Let me also acknowledge the presence of my husband. Uh, he's there with me, but not present in this room. 
let me give glory to God for this opportunity. And let me say, this is something worth fighting for. The truth. We need to guard it. We need to know it. We need to protect it. And we need, if necessary, give our life for it. You will see what I mean when we go further. Well, the truth is always under attack. As Christians, we are told to wear a belt of truth. And the belt is something you put around your waist in order to protect your back and to hold up your loins, right? So truth is very important. As a matter of fact, more than any um, natural war, is a spiritual attack on the truth. And some, we are told to wear the old armor, the of old God. armor of God. And one of the armor, one of part of the armor is the belt of truth. If you don't have the truth and you are believing in things, you may be believing a lie. And um, your whole life would have been wasted. Your faith, your sacrifices would have been wasted. Today's lesson, as we go into today's lesson, we're going to look at um, the church in John's days, which had to grapple with discerning between the spirit of the truth and the spirit of error. There's only two spirits, basically, in the world. The spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, and the spirit of error, which is under the power of Satan, the Antichrist. Some deceivers who operated in the spirit of the Antichrist had infiltrated the church. Believers had to be on their guard against them. They were like smooth talkers who made their message seem so very acceptable. The trouble is that they denied the most cardinal truth of the Christian faith, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, who came in the flesh. You know the term Emmanuel, God in the flesh, God with us. They denied the components of the gospel, which is the incarnation, and incarnation here means God in the flesh. The atonement, which is focusing on our forgiveness and um, cleansing God cleansing us from all of our sins. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, because resurrection is very critical to the Christian faith, because if Jesus Christ never resurrected from the dead, then we are serving a dead God. Our hope is in vain. Jesus' resurrection assures our resurrection. It assures us also that our faith as a hope we are hoping to be resurrected those who died in christ already and those who will die in christ eventually will be raised from the dead even those who died without christ will be resurrected to face judgment so resurrection is critical to the christian faith the intercession of jesus christ is also very important because he stands to intercede for us on our behalf so this was a life and a death struggle the denial of these truths would undermine all hope let me say this that the material things that are in this world they are just like um things to distract us things to tempt us and things to pull us away from the truth Material things, relationship, everything else is not as important as who you believe, what you believe, and how you live your life, who you live your life for. These things are critical. In today's lessons, we're going to see. So in, um, in those days, in John's days, he had to face these persons. Today, in 2024... There are gigantic struggles related to the faith. And it is still going on in Christendom. We too must be on our guard, lest we fall prey to those who would lead us astray. 
Several media carry Christian messages with various interpretations of the scripture. We have YouTube, WhatsApp, Facebook, TikTok, Google, right? Podcasts are available, television messages, radio messages, churches are all over the place, home, people visit you at home. There are printed literature and tracts, books, etc. And uh, one of the things that um, draw people to the Jehovah's Witness is that they deal with issues. That is one of them. That's one of them that will lead people astray. They, they provide uh, answers to a lot of questions that we about life. They deal with issues that face life. They deal with family issues. They claim to have the answer uh, they claim to have a biblical answer a godly answer for all of life's problems so they are very and their booklets are very attractive i find myself drawn to their books when you see a topic is being dealt with why is it that people suffer good people suffer things like those they deal with family issues and they provide like an answer but you know, interesting, there is um they have about six presidents and um they the top the 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 place where they operate from is out of the out of the um the their their main their their main um office out of their main office and they out of their office they have of uh, the founder started he passed and they have um five other presidents and somebody was on the television the other day and he was saying that he knew one of the top officials right and he was a teacher of teachers in the in their faith and he was a drunkard and he was offering life's answers the promises answers the problems and he, yet he couldn't find his own answer because he was a drunkard. It's not that we don't have Christians who, you know, not really living, but that was so blatant. He never had an answer to his problem. And yet he was teaching the answer to life's problems. So people are now concerned with which interpretation is correct. Some people genuinely don't know which church to go. I, when I got saved as a teenager, and that was a long time ago, I was confused about which was the correct church. So I prayed and asked God to guide me. And that same week, God directed me. Somebody came to me and invited me to the Church of God of Prophecy. I'm not saying it's the only correct church, but um, it's a full gospel church. It teaches the full gospel. And um, if we're not going to a full gospel church, because I know that this um, teaching will reach far and wide so if you are not attending a full gospel church then you need to look at it right because you want to know the truth so john the beloved the disciple that loved that jesus loved you know he's not boasting that he's the one who was loved by jesus what he actually was saying imagine me of all persons jesus loved me my, my, I am shocked. It was just saying, I'm really happy that I am loved by Jesus. So Christianity is about relationship for John, this apostle. If you look into the scripture, when he writes, look how he starts the book of John. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In 1 John 1 verse 1, he writes, That which we have seen and heard and touched and handled. Why did John have to write this in 1 John 1 verse 1? This is an introduction to the lesson. Because um, in those days, there were people that were called Gnostics. And they believe in something called Gnosticism. And um, they believe that some of them believe that Jesus was actually a phantom. He wasn't true, a real man because he thought the flesh is so corrupt. God will never come in the flesh. So they thought Jesus was a phantom. You see him 
and he's not there. So, you, you know, he wasn't a real man, a flesh and blood person. So that was one of the things that was corrupting the minds of the people who just came. Because Paul would go around, preach the gospel, and open churches. So these people would follow him around. More like um, evangelists these days, some evangelists that go around to various churches and they would look for the hospitality, depend on the hospitality of the persons to take care of them, look after them and so on. So they would follow Paul as he would go around to these churches. And after he goes around and establishes these churches, they would introduce to the people this Gnosticism. So he had to face them. So Gnostic, Gnostic is him actually talks about no to no nost as to no and gnosticism right study of knowledge so flesh they believe that flesh is corrupt and god could never come in the flesh so they were denying that jesus christ came in the flesh so paul had to grapple with these and it has worsened now in the 2024 so hot discussion points we want to have some discussions today please participate i don't know if we'll be able to cover most of this but please let us look at them false teachers are the judgment of god on those who after exposed to the truth still follow them because they are just like them that is something you need to look at we're gonna bring this up again another question we need to look at is is there a difference between a right and a choice? Do you have a right? Some people say they have a right to be what they want to be. I have a right if I want to be a murderer, if I want to be um, a sex worker, if I want to be homosexual, I have a right to be what I want to be. Do you have a right? Is it a right that you have or is it a choice that you make? Comment on the belief that being a Christian means you should accept and bless all persons regardless of what they believe. It does not matter what you believe as long as you are sincere. These are common sins. True love requires that you love the truth and tell people the truth. Question again. Is it correct to say that true love requires discipline? Lastly, why should a real Christian not show hospitality to false teachers? Most of these questions will be addressed in this lesson. The others are just provocative and it is related to the lesson, but we're going to think about them and look at them. So please look at these questions. We will revisit them later on in the lesson. So we're going to have a wonderful time tonight. So I'm just going to touch and go the topics and we can go further into it. All right, one little boy described the false doctrine as false doctoring, giving the wrong stuff to people. You're supposed to be, you claim to be a Christian and you claim to be a preacher, but you're preaching the wrong message to people. Just like a doctor, he gives you a wrong diagnosis, right? You're having um, a heart attack and he diagnoses you as you're having an asthmatic attack. That is dangerous, right? So you get the wrong treatment. You get an asthma pump and you die immediately because you're actually having a heart attack and the doctor thinks that you're having a... So there's what you call a wrong diagnosis. So examples now. Sinners are diagnosed as resourcefully poor and are given a prescription of prosperity without telling them they need to repent and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives to bring transformation and to bring deliverance to them so that they can be free to serve the Lord. All right, so I think I dealt with this already. John 8, verse 30 to 32 is a very important very important. Jesus Christ said to those disciples who believed on him, if he continue in my word, then he shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. 
So these um, early false prophets were teaching people. They didn't believe in Jesus. And some today, and I pointed out one, one group of persons, right? The Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't. They don't believe he was God. They don't believe he came in the flesh. They don't believe in a hell. And they don't believe in heaven. And they're not sure where, where they're going when they die. They're not sure. They're uncertain. Look at those. those. This is just one. But there are many others. Muslims also don't believe in Jesus. Right? So we need to know these things. Critical to the faith are these teachings. So five reasons John wrote his book. Right? I give you three here. You have to know that Jesus was real. Christianity is a first and relationship. So they so they he said that Jesus was not a phantom. They handled him. They touched him. You can't touch a ghost. You can't handle a ghost. Right? So John, the writer of the book of John, the writer of first, the second, and third John, right? <laughs> He was familiar with Jesus. He knew Jesus, right? So as we go into this, we want to look at God, all the God, the faith, the tr truth, right? In the third John, what were the three major false teachings that was being spread by false teachers? We're going to look at how we can repeat. First John 4, verse 1, that's a golden text, and you can read it. It says, um, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Repeat again. Beloved, he was regarding his people as beloved. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. All right, so foundations of our faith, John 1 verse 1. I am quoting this, I'm just going to read it. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. All right? That part, verse 6, speaks about John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He was not the light, but he was sent to be a witness of the light. The next part speaks about Jesus. Verse 10. He was in the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own. His own received him not. But as many as received him. To them gave he power. To become the sons of God. Oh, even God. to them that believe on his name. So we are a part of that. We receive Jesus. And it's critical that we understand the incarnation of Jesus Christ because our one um it's one of the pillars of truth. Because without Jesus coming in the flesh, he actually replaced us. He was a second Adam. He came in the flesh to die in the flesh for us who could not manage the kind of death that Jesus faced on the cross. But he was God. The word. He was the word. The word planted in Mary's womb became flesh. Only God can reveal that to us. Truly. Because when you consider the wickedness of man and the carnality of man and our carnal fleshes and filthy fleshes, you really don't want to accept the concept of a holy God. It's hard to believe. It's hard to understand. Only God can reveal this truth to us. So truly, only God, 
the Bible tells us that my sheep hear my voice. So unless God reveals this truth to us, we're not going to really understand it. Amen. It was one of those mornings when God told me, right, to come into his closet, right? I wanted something from God. I wanted to get some understanding and more deeper depth of God. And God said, come into my closet. I used to wake up five o'clock in the morning. I started to wake up four o'clock in the morning. And it was one of those mornings that at that um John 8 verse 30 to 32 came as a reality to me and I remember reading the scriptures all of John and I read about Jesus and what it just hit me like that and I said Jesus you are the son of God Jesus you are the son of God I became convinced and I'm prepared to do I'm prepared to die for this faith that I have in Jesus Christ. When that revelation comes to you, you're prepared to give up everything to follow Christ. And that is what John is saying. That which we have handled, let me find it. That which was from the beginning, Jesus, John is testifying. He saw Jesus, he walked with Jesus, he lay his head on Jesus' breast as a human being. He touched Jesus. He saw the miracles Jesus did. He watched him go to the um down. He watched him go to the cross. He watched him when they bur buried him. He watched him when he rose from the dead. And he said in himself, You know, sir, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The revelation hit him like it hit me. And he said, that which we was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. He's a, he said, this is a testimony. I saw him with my own eyes, which we, we as apostles, including himself, have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For he was manifested and we have seen him. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. Amen. That we also may have fellowship with us. That you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father. And with his son, Jesus Christ. This is liberating. This is Amen. eye opening. Glory to God. Rest These alive. things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. Get the Amen. truth. Don't, let the, don't be led astray by false doctrine. The truth is under attack. And the only reason why the truth is under attack because People don't throw a stone for an empty tree. You have to have mango and usually a ripe mango. So true. God is greater than our feelings. All right. So this is the first part of the lesson. So as Christians, you belong to the truth and you should live out that truth in fellowship with Jesus Christ. You know, um, we need to recognize that God is greater than our feelings. And in this section, um, the lesson is telling us that we belong to the truth. Once you're a Christian, because he was speaking to the Christians that were being bombarded by persons with false doctrine. And he was reassuring them that you belong to the truth. So let us read this section of the scripture. 1 John 3 verse 19 through 24. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 
And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus Christ and love one another as we gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that the, he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. So here we see the Holy Spirit is very critical to our salvation. Here we need to understand that we need to know that it is not enough to say that we love one another. This is what are going to be the one of the hallmarks of true Christianity. Genuine agape love. When we love one another, forgive one another, and reach out to one another in spirit and in truth. Not to just say it by words, but to genuinely care one for the other. This is it. The world doesn't know what true love is. The world cannot understand it because God puts his love in our hearts and we will really understand and know what true love is. When that bond of love operates in our life, we can be assured that we are walking in the favor of God. There are many times when we struggle with our standing with God because of our past sins. Satan stands ready to point an accusing finger at us, accusing, causing us to doubt our relationship with the Lord. But God is greater than accusations brought about by Satan. God has forgiven us. And if we want to be assured of that forgiveness, we need to read Romans 5 verse 1 and 2. Right? So, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. God just wipes out everything. Everything that we have ever done. It's almost like we have never done anything wrong in our life. He just cleanses us. Sometimes we can't forgive ourselves. And sometimes we tend to remember what. And we feel like we are not worthy of forgiveness. But God is greater than our feelings. He's greater than our guilt. Right, that we are experiencing. The word of God stands with God to believe what God says. So we need to believe what God says and do not follow our feelings. I feel so guilty. I feel so bad. Right, Satan is going to come to remind us to make us feel guilty, but God is greater than our conscience. So as long as we know that we are loving one another, forgiving one another, we need to be confident and stand on the word the word of God, not our feelings. Our feelings come and it goes, right? So when that guilt is gone, we can come boldly to the throne, believing he will meet our every need. So John gives us two reasons why our prayers are answered. First of all, because we obey the Lord Jesus Christ, we obey his commandments, and we obey his commandments and we walk in his will. Having resigned ourselves to the will of God, our prayers are based on our faith in the wisdom and power of God to bring the desired result. Turning the matter over to him, we wait patiently for his response. So that is one other thing. The first, we walk in his commandments. Second, God answers our prayers because we do the things that please him. Our relationship with him is genuine, without pretense, without hypocrisy. It's an incentive, wonderful incentive for us to give. This, this gives us to live righteously, right? Righteously and love God unreservedly because God honors such a life and the attitude and bestows his blessing richly upon us. So our prayers are answered when we ask God, ask God in his will, whatever it is in the will. So we learn the will of God eventually, eventually. And we ask his will. And thereby none of the prayers that we pray will go unanswered. But when we are immature and we are not walking in his will, we tend not to ask the things that is in God's will. 
and therefore we don't get the answers that we want. So let us not be discouraged. God is greater than our conscience. We need to walk. That is the assurance we have. The scriptures make it very clear that whatsoever we ask according to his will, in the name of Jesus, for his sake, in faith, we will receive it. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and it shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone that asks it, receive it. And everyone that seek it, find it. And everyone that knock it, it shall be opened. Matthew 7, verse 7 to 8. So we have that confidence in God that whatever we ask, he's got it. He got our petitions and he will answer them in his own time because he knows best. That is coming from 1 John 5, verses 14 through 15. All right, so um, we love one another is one of the hallmarks of Christian faith. Another thing is that we must understand that you must live in fellowship with Jesus Christ. And this is a commandment. I'm reading from verse 29. And this is a commandment that we should believe on the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Did I see 29? Verse 23. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And believing on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, is a loaded statement. When we believe on the son, you know that the, um, the Jews understood what Jesus meant when he said he was the son of God. He was making himself God. So that is what... They understood. They knew what Jesus meant. And therefore, they wanted to stone him. But they didn't believe. Right? So faith, anybody who come with a faith who claim that Jesus was not the son of God. Or he was a lesser God than fa the father. A prophet or something like that. It is also don't believe it. Right? They don't believe that Jesus was God. They believe that he was a lesser God than the father he is god there's one god and he is presented in father son and holy ghost and we cannot understand it our natural self but only god can reveal it to us but we have to say the truth what god teaches us in the word what revealed to us that is what we need to understand and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ. God is Son. God is God is the Father is God and the Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. There's no lesser and no greater. They're all one. Believe on the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know. That he abideth in us by his Holy Spirit, which he hath given to us. So when you believe and accept Jesus Christ as the son of the living God, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Other than that, there's some other spirit. Don't believe it. So John sums up our duty as it relates to keeping Christ's commandment in two words. Believe and love. That is the hallmark of the Christian. One who believes in Jesus Christ and one who loves. Love one another. So anybody who is outstanding and they are unforgiving, they don't love the agape love, right? Love even when people don't deserve it, regardless of how you look, what you, what you have, what you don't have. You love people. You mean people well. I would say that definition of love. You believe in Jesus' name is to believe he is the son of God. If you don't say Jesus is the son of God, you don't believe in his name. It's clear as that. If you don't believe Jesus Christ is the son of God, is God himself, you don't believe. So believe and love go hand in hand. Now, we're going to look at discerning false prophets. How can you discern false prophets? This is part of the lesson today. 
How can we deserve false prophets? You belong to God. First of all, you have to understand that you belong to God. Let us read um, 1 John 4. The, lesson, the part of the lesson that is quoted. I'm going to read from 1 to 6 from this printed text here on the screen. Beloved. So John is referring to the saints as beloved. Believe not every spirit. But try the spirits, whether they go are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. And we are of God. That knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. It is said that um, those who follow a certain man, a false prophet, and I'm going to call his name. A false prophet, right? It is God's judgment up, upon them because they are just like the false prophet. This is what the word of God is saying. Anybody who follow a false prophet, even after they have learned what the truth is and continue to follow the false prophet, it's God's judgment on them because they are just like the false prophet. This is the word of God. It says, they are of the world, verse 5. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear it them. So those who are of the world will hear those who are of the world. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. So the Holy Spirit inside of you is going to detect, is going to discern that this man is of the truth. I believe him. So he's of the truth and I'm going to listen to him. He that is not of God, hear it not us. So if we are listening to God and we are listening to a prophet and he's Speaking what God is saying in our spirits, the Holy Spirit inside of us is bearing witness that this person is speaking the truth. Somebody who comes and is not speaking the truth, somehow your spirit is going to pick up and said, you know, that does sound so right. That don't sound so right. Let me check my Bible and pray about it like a Berean Christian. I'm not going to follow this person. So persons who are not of the world, persons who are of God, this scripture is saying in 1 John 4, verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God, heareth us. He that is not of God, heareth not us. This is very profound. So now we know why some people tend to follow false doctrine. They follow false prophets. Some people running from church to church here and there trying to pick up all kinds of things. They have no um, stickability. They have no um, certainty of where they are at and where they what they believe. Because the Holy Spirit is not in them. 
we need to really pray for people, you know, because this is the word of the Lord. This is not my word. So the second part, here's the second part of verse six. He that is not of God, hear it, not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So some persons who are lazy Christians who will not read their Bible, who don't know the truth, because Christ said in St. John 14, the verse, so chapter 16, he's going to send the comforter the spirit of truth, and he will guide us into all things. So that is a common thing between all Christians. They have the truth and they belong to God. So we need to understand that if we belong to God, we will follow his truth. How do believers overcome false teachers and false teaching? First, we do so by the grace of God. It is God's mercy. That we are not deceived. If we belong to God and truly depend on him. He will enable us to be overcomers. Because some people. The, the way they preach some things. Trust me. You will be carried away. Led away. Because they are so smooth. They, are, they, they come with this passion. And it's hard to detect. Passion from anointing. right? Because they are charismatic. I was watching this charismatic leader of a church the other day. The man came on with the people and he was so smiling and all, so pleasant and, you know, and he was preaching what the people wanted to hear and everybody loved him. That man murdered his wife. Murdered his wife. He was carried away with lust. He made a date with this girl and he went and engaged the girl four months before his wife, he murdered his wife. Four months before. This is not a fiction story. This is reality in America. He murdered his wife. And he, even after he murdered his wife, he went and preached just like that. Where is that love? There's no love there. There's no fellowship there. Fellowship. All in the same ship. The Holy Spirit is that ship. All in the truth. But the sisters, the relatives of the wife, his wife, the sweet, charming lady, well, pursued because they didn't believe him. They wouldn't shake his hand. They would not have any fellowship with him. And they pursued and they found out eventually, right, that he actually shot his wife in the back with a long rifle and he did right in the house and he said that you know he was just went on as if nothing happened cold blooded murderer a deceiver smooth talker charming handsome guy killed his wife so the coldness that's why I that's why I um look at this one let me see. That's why I said Gnosticism is part of the lies. Right? I For us to remember it, I want us to say no. I put the part no. Gnosticism. Right? That is when you know. They, they want to know. They know. They study things that they may know. That is what they claim to know the truth. Right? But it's going to lead so nasty schism, homosexuality, all the sexual immorality, children, like men with children, men, you know, anything, any kind of thing. You read um Genesis 19, you're going to see the kind of things that are going to come out of these people because it's a spirit that is going to lead them, an evil spirit. Right now, some of it is being shown, but not all of it. But if we follow the lies that is on this basis of Gnosticism, we are going to lead into Gnosticism and we're going to see it played out. 
because God is going to reveal some of these people who claim to be leaders, who claim to have the truth, who claim to have the response to life, the answers to questions that people ask. And they look so good and they come so nice, but basically they don't have the Holy Spirit. They have the spirit of error and it's going to lead to Gnosticism. We belong to God. So we need to try these spirits. So it doesn't matter when somebody come and they're preaching and they are seeming to be so good and they are very charismatic. We have to learn to discern. And we also need to study, watch people and see their lifestyle because the lifestyle is going to be a giveaway. Know we the spirit of error. Believe not every spirit. We are of God, verse um, four, verse four. Ye are of God. Ye are of God, little children. So here, the uh, um the apostle John is saying, "Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world." They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So it doesn't matter what people's um, position, their status, their educational status, their financial status, no matter how pretty they are, no matter how handsome they are. How are we going to know them? We pray for them and we love the person. Sometimes they have such beautiful personality and we are drawn to them. This is it. This is the crooks of the matter. This is where the rubber eats the road. This is where you tell truth from lie. Those who are of God know it, God. Hear it, us. So if you're praying for somebody and they are turning from the Lord and they're not coming and they're just going to so these other denominations that are not speaking the truth and not embracing the full gospel, it's time for us to wake up and know that they are not of God if they don't hear us. They are going away. Stop wasting your time. Right? I'm not saying that we should give up on people. But after, the Bible said, after um, correction, correcting a person several times and they don't accept the faith, reject them, right? Reject them. All right, the last section, beware of deceivers. Okay, I never put this one in. The scripture never did. Um, Second John 1, verse 7 to 11. Reading from this. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have brought, but that we receive a full re reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath put the Father and the Son. If there come only unto you and bring not doctrine, receive not into your house. Neither bid him God speed, for he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of this evil deeds. I one of the questions I wanted to find out is why should a real Christian not show hospitality to false teachers?
And this one comment on the belief that being a Christian means you should accept and bless all persons regardless of what they believe. Let's look at these questions in the in the light of what John, first John, second John, sorry, second John 1, verse 7 to 11 is saying. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. So we see that um not everything is everything here when it comes to Christian. Christianity, everybody who claims to be a Christian. But God is saying, John is writing to the brethren, many false teachers have gone out into the world. And he's saying to them, don't extend any hospitality to them. Right? Whosoever, if they transgress it, the law, abide it not in the doctrine of Christ. Hath not God, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. So if we accept the doctrine of Christ, the incarnation, Jesus came in the flesh. If we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is God himself. If we believe these two basic foundations, that we as Christians, we have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit guides us. If we believe that, then we have both the Father and we have the Son. If you reject the Son, you have rejected the Father. If you reject the Father, you reject the Son. The two are agreeing with each other. So if there come any unto your house, if they bring not this doctrine, how are you going to know? Ask them, what do you believe? Some of them will try to smooth it out and try to go around it. Receive them not, the Bible said, into your house. Neither bid them Godspeed. Don't wish them. God bless you and go on your way. No. No. Don't extend hospitality to them, the Bible said. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. The Bible said, no, this is where I say no hospitality must be extended. Don't wish them Godspeed. Don't invite them on your rostrum. Don't let them partake in anything that no fellowship with them. This is where the Bible said, draw a straight line, a clear black and white sign. This is, right? This is where you declare that they of the spirit of the Antichrist. And the Bible said they are already in the world. They are already in the world. So in this second letter, John repeats his former warning about the coming of the messengers who represent the spirit of the Antichrist. So all of these churches, one of these days, eventually they are going to be for Christ or for the Antichrist. So it's too clear division. You are either for Christ or you're for the Antichrist. All of these churches, all Christians are going to fall into two groups, for Christ or for the Antichrist. So if we are living in sin, and we are falling short of the grace of God, we are know that we are not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. And we don't accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God because he has to be God. To go through all that Jesus suffered, he had to be God. So here we could close our Bibles and say, let us go home. We need to guard God's truth. Know who we are in Christ. Know what God has done for us. Have the confidence that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Do not follow your feelings. Follow what the word of God teaches. Follow your faith. And what God says is true. Hold on to that. Not your feelings. Don't hold on to your past guilt. Because God wipes away all your sins. Right? We are to live in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and with one another. Show love for one another. 
Learn to discern the spirit of error. Study your Bible. Study it and know it. Be like a Berean Christian. Learn to discern. Listen to people. And don't just be quick to say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Listen to them. Discern what they are coming with. Right? Hold on to the truth about Jesus Christ. Beware. There are deceivers around. Don't be carried away with them. No matter how smooth talking they are, no matter how charismatic they are, no matter how charming they are in their personality, handsome, no matter how well-dressed they are, how kind they are, and they are ready to scoop up people who feel that they have been badly treated by the Christian brethren and they don't have that forgiveness in them. And they go and complain and they will say, oh, come to my church. Oh, this so-and-so. And they embrace you quickly. Right? But we need to learn to forgive one another and embrace one another. Right? Show the love of God in action and in deed. Be kind one to another. So beware of these deceivers and reject false teachers. That is what God, this is lesson is about. Treat them as anathema. Treat them. Let God's curse fall on anyone. If we read um, 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 8. If anybody comes with a doctrine, let God's curse fall on anyone, including us. If I, Paul, let me shall change today and tomorrow I begin to say that Jesus Christ didn't come in the flesh. The Bible is saying, let a curse fall upon anyone who do that. Even if it's an angel come from heaven who preaches a different kind of good news than that which you have heard. Jesus came in the flesh. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus was God. Jesus rose from the dead. Let them be anathema. The danger of denying that Christ is just as real today as it was in John's days. There are multitudes of people who declare they believe in God and express their allegiance to him, but who reject Jesus Christ. No true follower of God can take that position because biblical faith is founded on the incarnation, the atonement, and the finished work of Jesus Christ. My sins are forgiven. My sins were paid for on the cross of Jesus Christ. My sins are blotted out by the sacrificial death of the son of God. And that I want us to understand the difference between when Jesus Christ said he is the son of man. That means he talked about his humanity. God in the flesh. Son of man, God in the flesh. He came out as a baby out of Mary's womb. Son of man. And he walked the earth and he fasted and he prayed as the son of man. But he was also the son of the living God. And that is how he was able to do all of those miracles because he believed in God and he trusted God. He was God. No man can do these miracles except God be with him. That man in John 9. He said, ha, you don't know where this man is from. You don't know and you are a teacher of the law. My word, this is strange. You don't know where and yet he has opened my eyes. You sure say you're a leader? You sure you know the truth? Are you sure you're teaching the truth? Yet he had opened my eyes and you don't know where he's coming from. Merciful Father. That was a blind man speaking to teachers of the law, teachers of teachers. So let us not be fooled by the color, by the dress that people wear, by the how charismatic they are, how they come and try to profile. Hold on to the truth. Defend the truth. We don't have much time. We have gone way over. But um, I would like for you to engage me in a discussion briefly, with permission, of course, because I'm way over time. But this is critical, wouldn't you say? 
Yes, very I'll give you some. a few and minutes. I guess by, by the tone of my voice, you know how passionate I am about this lesson. Yes. Right. I hope you're just as passionate as I am. Ten you. minutes a month. Yes. Ten minutes a month. All right. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so one by one, we can. I want to hear you mostly. I have spoken enough. I want to hear from you now. You want to start with any one of them? Which one you want to start with? You want to start at the top and then we go down? False teachers are the judgment of God and those who, after exposed to the truth, still follow them because they are just like them. Would you agree with that statement? Hello, are you there? Your time to speak. I'm reading the statement. False teachers yeah. are the judgment of God on those who, after exposed to the truth, still follow them because they are just like them. And um, and I would agree with that. I think it also ties in with the last sentence, the last um question For down sure, the bottom yeah. of the line. Should a real Christian not show hospitality to false teachers? Because when we do, you know, we are just as corrupt as they are. You know, um, we we are accomplices, you know, to to the false doctrine that is being um promulgated in the world. Right? So yes, the judgment of, of God look on at, those look at uh, are, Sorry. Yes. Yes. First John four, verse six. Mm -hmm. Yes. First John the four. The second part. The second part. Let's find it on this thing. Look at it again. First John four. Sorry. Mm -hmm. First John verse four, six. verse six. The second part. Yes, we it? are of God. He yes. that knoweth God, heareth us. Yes. He that is not of God, heareth not us. Hereby. Know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of, spirit of error. error. So they don't right. have the word spirit. Right. Because if you spirit of error. So they yeah, will put that as leading. Mm -hmm. so, so that is it. So is so they are gonna follow and follow and follow those people until they they they, they lead they lead them astray. Lead Show me your spirit. company and I will you who you are and that's why many people many times they, they, they are involved in a cultic um practice exactly. you know and, and a lot of persons end up following because they really are able to lead people astray and they are persons and if you follow, allow them to do and if you, exactly and if you follow these if you listen to them carefully they have every criticism for the real church mm -hmm. Every criticism for the truth. If mm -hmm. you really listen. To right, and what I know is to too, the many times they are charismatic. So um, very so beautiful and sound. They're oh, yes. talkers. You know, um, they know yes. the right things to say. To say. Because people just want to hear something hear, nice. Yes. You know, yes. um, if so, if 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 you want people to follow you, just go up there and start to talk and say, the Lord is going to do this for you, and the Lord is going to, yeah. and the Lord said so and so for you, you know, and that's what the people they gravitate to, you know, and then are trying the spirit, right. see if this word is really of God and from God, they, you know, exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. So many times we don't try the spirit; we just we just gravitate, we just latch on to because we are hearing something that you know we, we want, want to hear. hear. Right. Right. And they appeal, and most of the time they appeal to your emotions. Exactly. And you have a hurt, crushed emotion. You want to do what you want to do, and you don't want nobody to tell you say you're a sinner and you have done wrong. You must apologize. Mm -hmm. You hurt the person that don't want to hear that. They just want you to lead them on. You go, you you go, girl. You go, boy. You go, man. You're doing the right thing. God is with you. You know, and there mm -hmm. it is. What about the next one? Is there a difference between a right and a choice? And a choice. I believe so. 
Yes. Um, I write to right. something. Or let me get give give someone else an opportunity to respond. Anybody else? All right. So that they say you have a right is your body and you can get that abortion as you so desire. Right? You have a right to choose whether you have the child or not. Is that a right according to the remember, you know, we're based it on biblical principles here. We're discussing from we're discussing from no. international laws and national laws. We're talking about biblical principles. What I don't think it's a, a I don't right? think it's a right. It's the, I think it's a choice. It's a choice. Right. So you only have a right when God promises you something. Right? Yeah. You have a, a right, right to is an entitlement. You a right it's for me is something that you're entitled to. Yes. Um, a choice right. is where you accept even that right, that thing that you're entitled to. You can be entitled to it, you know. Right. But you have a choice to accept that and and and, and embrace that entitlement, you know, or reject it. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a that's right. for me a choice you know, to accept or not to do so. Well, right is an entitlement. Sorry. Right. So if you have an entitlement, if God give you an entitlement, that entitlement should not contradict God's law. Because no. Because if you say to me as a woman, I have a right to do abortion if I don't want a pregnancy. If I'm going to kill that child in my womb, then I don't, it's not a right. Because if I kill a child in my life, that would be a murder I have committed. Right? I have a choice in that I can keep child or I keep child. The choice to me will determine how God will judge you. You have a choice. The right you have is to do God's will. I would say that. Yes, and I would also want to say that man can give you a right. Um, the 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 law of the land, legislation can give yeah. you rights, but it doesn't necessarily mean that yeah. those rights that are made available to you are embedded in the word of God or line up to the standard Thank you so of much. God. Very good point. Yes. Very good point. And so it's important for you to know if this legislative right that is given to you lines up with right. the right that the Lord has given you. And then you make a choice from yes. there. Yes. True. Okay, next one. Comment on the belief that being a Christian means that you should accept and bless all persons regardless of what they believe. I think that was in line with the bottom one. Why should a Christ, real Christian not show hospitality? Exactly, right. Christ? You should reject oh. if, if the person doesn't believe the truth. You know, you, you shouldn't embrace them. Um, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't make an effort, though, to, um, to point them. Make them as a human being, eh? Truth. Yes, mm -hmm. but if, they, if, you, if you are trying to point them to the truth and they still reject then um you need to disassociate. I think the Bible says we need to Amen, disassociate right. ourselves. Yes. This person may be our co-workers, this person may be our neighbors and all of that. Mm -hmm. But one thing we know though, we need to love people. And love people mean them well. And this is where the Christian comes in. You pray for them. That God will mm -hmm. save them. Remember this scripture which tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? So we pray and ask God to rebuke the spirit from their life that is deceiving them. It could be our own child, it could be our own spouse, it could be um, it could be a neighbor, it could be a co-worker. And the way we respond as Christians is to pray for them that God will save them. Right, so because even because um, but they once they confess 
and they're not relenting, that, then that, that is when we, you know, we really should let them go. All mm -hmm. right? They're not relenting. Mm -hmm. So we have to know when to draw the line. But the Bible said, don't even wish them Godspeed. Don't give them money. Don't help them. Don't, don't, don't do that. God said, don't do it. All right. This is the next one. It doesn't matter what you believe, as long as you're sincere. Some people will say that. You, you're going to mm. go many ways to God. You don't have to As long as you do something, you pick some pointers, some things you believe in. And as long as you're sincere to those set of beliefs, you're well on your way. People will say that. Mm -hmm. Comment on that. Does it matter what we believe? Yes, Can it what does. we believe it lead us astray or lead us along the path of righteousness? It can. It can lead you astray or it can um, lead you on the path of righteousness. So it is important what you believe. So um, it matters. So I do not agree with the statement that it does not matter. It matters what you believe. And mm -hmm. your belief should really be hinges, uh, hinged onto the precepts of God. The word of God, yes. Yes, yes. true. All right, I'm going to ask that you wrap up, though. Um, Street yeah. 731. Yes. So I'll allow you to go to one more, and then we wrap up. Okay, what about the, um, the second last one? Maybe those two work hand in hand. True love requires that you love the truth and tell people the truth. Is it correct to say that true love requires discipline? Right? We could say that um, true love requires discipline because if you're going to love one person, some people said um, that you fall in love and some, but some people say you can have a marriage and you don't love the person anymore. You fall in love with somebody else. It requires discipline to remain in that covenant relationship. Christianity requires discipline. Discipline your mind. Train your mind to follow the truth. Right? Train your mind to follow God's law. Because therein lies your disciplined mind. A sound mind. Because the person, when I did um, psychology, abnormal psychology, persons who are mad, they don't have a sound mind. They, they're all over the place. They have a mania. They're like a maniac all over the place. But a disciplined mind, a trained mind, will learn to love. As a matter of fact, love is a commandment from God, and we should have that commandment. Right? So it requires love, it requires discipline. It requires also truth. Because if you hurt me, I need to be honest enough with you to say, you have hurt me. By what you did, you hurt me. Right? And we patch up our relationship. A lot of times, we don't want to tell people the truth. Because we don't want people to feel bad about us. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much, Minister Mitchell. Put your hands together, colleagues. Put your hands together, colleagues in Christ. Um, show your appreciation. Bless you, Minister Mitchell. Thank, Thank you. Very, you. Much, Thank you. Much. very good. Very good. Very good. Thank you so very much, Minister Mitchell. In-depth right. study of the word. We thank you for taking the time out to prepare yourself and to do the study and to come back to us, you know, as we look at guarding God's truth. I say it's not just the truth, but it's God's truth. And in order for Amen. us to guard it, we also need to know it. You can't guard right. something. You can't be guarding, guarding um, something and you don't know what is it that you're guarding. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, someone can come and snatch it away Right, and you don't even recognize. So you have to know what is it you're guarding. 
And if you are going to guard it and truly guard it, you have to recognize the value of what is it that you are guarding. So you will go all out to guard. And to guard God's truth, you know, is our ultimate responsibility. We can't afford to let the God's truth be tarnished, you know, by the world and by, you know, um, persons who will go out there and um, false teachers and and um, just say what they wish to say, you know, contaminate the word of God you know, and, and bring it to others. We can't afford that. I don't know. We're in a political environment and you listen to people when they are defending their belief, you know, whatever um, political belief that they support, they will go all out. You know, they call them die-hearted, you know, and they will guard the party and guard the philosophy of a particular um, political um side and 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 just as how they'll do that at whatever cost you know we have to know the philosophies of our god we have to know god's truth and defend it at all costs and guard it at all costs and so we will not entertain the false teachers and enable them but instead we will discourage them and disassociate ourselves from them. Thank you so very much, everyone, for being here. I'm going to ask that someone does close for me in prayer. Sister Ellis, I see you on. Can I ask you to pray? Just close in prayer. Good evening, everyone. Let's pray. And in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your loving kindness towards us. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that we can tune in to your words and to share with each other. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you continue to bless and keep us. Remember, Minister Mitchell and their family, keep and guide and protect them, Lord. Continue to bless her and that you can share more with us, Lord, and impart the word. Father, help us to bless. We cover every family. Everyone that is out on the road, even now at the different churches, pastor and all the team that has gone out. Father God, I pray that you'll cover them under your blood. Keep them safe in the name of Jesus and that they will return home safe. Help us to have a blessed week. Help us to continue to focus on you and to seek you more, especially in these days. Lord, draw us nearer and close as a family together, united in love and action. In the name of Jesus, these mercies I have in your name and we say, Amen. amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, continue to guard God's truth. Um, spread the word of God. Know the word of God for yourself so that you know what to guard and you'll be able to decipher and discern the truth right from errors. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Um, our assistant superintendent is on the platform. I just want to give him an opportunity just to, to say hi before we close officially. Brother Jones. <laughs>